Now once you've completed your drawing, you're going to move from the model space to the 11 by 17 layout tab. And in here I've already got a title block. It's numbered incorrectly. There's no specific information. You're going to fill all that out. But notice when I switch to the title block, I don't see my deck. Well, that's because we haven't got the right layers turned on or off in the viewport. So I double clicked inside the viewport. And again, this is a bit of a review. I'm going to click on the deck upper layer and notice that it's got a frozen symbol there. Uh, I'm going to click on that and it will thaw it out and therefore be visible on your screen. So that's how you move it to this page. Adjust this page a bit in order to fit your project depending on whether you've used the media space area in there or not. It all depends. The scale of this window is 3 16 Now you can use the Z enter in uh, 1 over whatever the number is XP or you can just go down to the bottom in the ribbon area and make sure it says 3 16 inch e equals 1 foot. That's the right scale. This is the page you're going to send to me as part of assignment number two. So I've got one completed here that I've worked on here. So this is my project, just I use as an example. There's the PDF. This is the level of information that I expect from the perspective of the um, decking. So here's the deck pattern, deck pattern, the double edge treatment and the the information that's labeled on it. We want to keep as many labels off the drawing as possible. Now the only thing I'm missing here is the dimensional value of all these different things. We're going to stick to some basic overall dimensions. I'm going to put some in here now just so that you can take a look at this. I'm going to switch, switch to a dimensional layer. I already have one and if I go there I've actually got the detailed dimensions on here. I only need the second level of dimensions or the overall dimensions for this particular project which simply indicates where the different um, deck changes are. So I'm going to turn that one off because it's a bit confusing. I'm going to go into and make a new layer for just this purpose for the purpose of this demonstration. So let's go into layer control and I will create a layer for dimensioning. So this is uh, dimensioning for the uh, general shapes. So I'll just do overall. Make sure I don't have that somewhere already because I can't overwrite an existing layer. I'll make that red. Good. And that's the correct dimension. And again, that's all review. And now I need an annotation style of 3 16 So let's see if I already have one. That's actually 1 over 64 XP. So I'm going to go into annotations here. And right now it's set to 24. I do have one. And I've called it um, arc detail um, arc detail 64. Let me just make sure that you've got the same variables. The only thing you needed to do adjust here, if I go into modify it, is this number here, the overall scale 64. And that's in the fit tab. All the other ones are already preset to dimensions. Uh, quarter inch, half inch, but this is the one we're going to have for this particular element. Perfect. Now I don't recommend dimensioning in the viewport. I have a bit more uh, experience in this, so I'm quite confident that I should be able to do this fairly accurately. And uh, all I have to do is move into the right layer. That would be helpful, wouldn't it? Uh, dim overall. It's off in this layer. Um, I just turned it on so it's visible in the viewport and I've made it current. Now I can dimension it. And again, all of this is review, but it's been such a long time since the last time you worked with this. Uh, sometimes it's easy to forget. So um, from here, I'm not going to dimension the individual steps. I'm going to try to I try to do continue again and see where it comes up with. Oh, it seems to be working. And I'm just picking the major elements that are in here. And I'll adjust the text afterwards. So that works well with that. And then I need this to, I can use that break or I can just move it to here just so that I have some nice numbers to work with. And I'll continue. And there are some of the pieces I want to work with here. That gives me the overall dimensions of major elements, and I'll do the same here. There we go. And continue along here to that corner, and 
that corner. That's really all I need. Now I'm going to double click outside of this. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. I need an overall dimension for my deck. So pick one spot, the other spot. Go to there. I'll adjust the text later on. And I'm going to do the same here. One side, the other side. Move down below. And the same here. Pick up that corner, that corner, and move that over here. Perfect. Now I can go in here and adjust some of the information so it doesn't interfere with the dimensional values. That's all I'm trying to do. I want to make sure that I can see all the dimensions. This is interfering with some of the text. There we go. I can see every dimension. The leaders aren't interfering with anything. These are pretty good. This needs to be adjusted. That's going to use a stretch. So in here, I'm going to use a stretch command because I want to grab all of this. And I want to move it into position where it's not interfering with the dimensions. This one in here, that one's pretty simple. I'm going to slide that down here. Good. That's not too bad. This one I'm going to take off the dimensions altogether. If I've got room, I'm going to move that over. Uh, let's see. Eh, it's not letting me. That's okay. I've got a snap that's on right now. I'm going to remove it. Shift right mouse key. Select none. And let's see if it'll allow me to move it over. There we go. So I want to keep my text information off my dimensions so it's clear what is what. There's nothing that's sort of over top of each other. This is close, but it still seems to work. The numbers don't have to be perfect. I have inch, half inch, five eighths, seven eighths. That's okay. It gives me the overall size of the project. Then the final thing I'm going to do in here is simply turn off the viewport layer because I don't need to see it. There we go. So this needs to be filled out properly with your name and your information. This is the client's name. So client number, project number, change that to your name or you can place your name somewhere in here just so it's clear whose it is. And that's the level of imagery I would expect from your project. Outline the overall edge of your pergola. Those are my posts. The outside edge is two feet from the center of the post in that direction and in that direction. So make a rectangle, offset of two feet, you're done. Same with the kitchen. Make sure that the countertops meet the minimum requirements for the width. Place it on your deck and simply identify where it is. So that's what I expect for assignment number two as your submission. It again is worth another 10% for the term grade. And now in any of the projects you submit, you have to make sure your name and student number on, are on each and every one of them. So in this particular case, what I'm going to do is uh, copy the title block information here. So I'm going to select this square right here, and I'm going to copy it from this corner here to that corner there. And this is where you can put in your student information. So in here, I'm just going to double click it to change it to uh, name and a colon. And beneath that, you're going to put in your name and your student number. So we can simply copy some of the information that's already there. Um, I, if you press F8, it nicely lines it up. So there you go with your name. And in here, I'm going to put in student number. Oops. And you can fill out that information. Just make sure you're using a font that uh, fits within that space. And the name has to be your registration name. Uh, and in some cases, um, students don't use the same name um, as a casual name as they do for registration. So it must show your registration name. The project number down here is based on your class. So in here, once again, what I'm going to do is simply copy this information. And you're going to call this 
LEND254. I've got special text characters coming up here. I'm not too sure why. There we go. 254. Underscore. And there you're going to put in which assignment number. So I've got your name, I've got your student number, and this will be assignment number um, SSIGN. And oh, see, I've got these special text characters coming up. I'm not too sure why. So just put in the assignment number. In this case, particular case, it's number two. So put in underscore two. And that will give me all the information. When you are submitting this file, make sure in the email, at the top of the email, it actually has LAN254, your section. Now, there may be a section A or a section B, or it may be all together. I'm not too sure at the time I'm recording this. And then underscore last name, underscore first name. And that's what you're going to send to me. The PDF is noted the same way. So for instance, if it was myself, I'm just going to write this down here so you can see it. Uh, but obviously, you're not going to use my name. Any files that you send to me will be in this format. And then I'll erase it once it's in here. L-A-N-D, in this case here, it's, I apologize for these special text characters that keep popping up. It seems when I'm typing too quickly, they come up. LAN254 underscore. This would be my file. And then the assignment number. In this case, it's two. I need this sent to me in this manner. All your files will be named in this manner. Your emails will be titled in this manner so that I can neatly and quickly um, identify the projects as they come in. If you type anything else in the memo or in the uh, the name of the file, the project, I'm just going to send it back simply saying um, in proper format. So make sure you're following the format. This is very critical. And in industry, this is the same thing. You need to follow the format for submissions to the building department or any uh, contests that you get involved in where there's multiple uh, groups applying for the same project. So make sure you're following this criteria precisely. Okay. Good. This is due at the end of the day of lesson four, which is coming up uh, in the next lesson period.